السلام علیکم ٹاپک از اسلامک پرسپیکٹیو آف سٹیزن شپ ویوز آف مسلم اسکالرز اینڈ کنٹمپرری ایشوز لیٹ می ریڈ آؤٹ نان مسلمس ایز ویل ایز مسلمس ہیو اے ڈیزائر ٹو لیو ٹوگیدر ان پیس ایز سٹیزن آف دا سیم کنٹری ہاؤ ور آل ٹو اوفن دا سچویشن رنس اگینسٹ آل ایکسپیکٹیشن دیر آر مس انڈرسٹینڈنگس ریگارڈنگ واٹ سم پیپل ریفر ٹو ایز دا سپوزٹلی کنفلکٹنگ ریلیشن شپ بٹوین Islamic rules and the domestic laws, regulations and traditions of the countries. In the light of this scenario, the concept of citizenship and the situation of Muslim minorities appear to be the most important. Citizenship in its contemporary context has developed in tandem with the expansive role and functions of the nation state. The Islamic notions of belonging to a political community, territory and a system of rule are all present in the source data of the Quran and Sunnah. Yet they remain under, undeveloped and also bar, burdened the, with uh, attritional jurisprudence uh, that has developed around the notions of Dar al-Aman and Dar al-Harb, adobe of Islam and adobe of war respectively. Yet quite fundamental sense, the rules of fiqh on residence and domicile within the wider Dar al-Islam are far less restrictive than the immigration and citizenship laws of the present day Muslim countries. The word citizen did not formally appear until the French Revolution of 1789. In practice, however, citizenship has not always meant that all people within a certain territory had con common and equal rights. The majority of Muslim commentators subscribe to the view that uh, citizenship is not recognized in the Sharia. Citizenship as a theme of concern does not feature in the writing of Muslim jurists of early times. The Islamic equivalent of citizenship can be dated back to the renowned constitution of Medina, the native individuals and tribes of Medina, and the newly arrived migrants, uh, that is the Muhajirin, were gra uh, granted protection as well as uh, the set of rights and duties toward one another and the nascent city uh, state of Medina. In the past, the historical division of the world in the House of Islam, Dar al-Islam, and the House of War, Dar al-Harb, and the some, uh, somewhat less than egalitarian treatment that was visited on the Dhimmi or non-Muslim residents in Muslim lands reflected the political and military super superiority of Muslim powers. And the division of the world into Muslim and non-Muslim and its effects. To say it right at the beginning, there appears to be no explicit sacred text neither from the Quran or nor the Sunnah, about such a division. However, in the past, the vast majority of Muslim scholars of the Sunni as well as the Shia legal schools were in agreement about the existence of such a division. There were only some minor conflicts between the Hanafis and other schools about the case of minor Muslim territory, Dar al-Islam, becoming Dar al-Kufr, non-Muslim territory. As a Muslim state, the Ottoman Empire had been adhering to uh, implementing Uh, to and uh, implementing this division until 1868. In this year, a new regulation about the citizenship in the Ottoman Empire was introduced under the title of Tabiyat the Osmaniye Kanunamisi. Today, some moder modern scholars, among them Tariq Rahman, are deliberately putting aside these concepts, considering them old fashioned terms from the period of classical medieval jurisprudence. However, such an approach would also neglect certain rather basic Islamic legal principles on which such division is usually supposed to be based. And some of the territories, the, the word territory is divided into distinct territories. Uh, Dar al-Islam, this comprises a territory in its enti uh, entirety in which the law of Islam prevails. And Dar al-Kufr, that is a territory of non-Muslims. Some scholars refer to this also as Dar al-Harb, However, such a desi designation is incorrect, as the term Dar al-Harb would only be applicable should that, uh, should that state be at war with a Muslim con country. And the Dar al-Kufr can be subdivided into two groups. Dar al-Harb, this term refers to, refers to the whole territory where Muslims have no authority or political power and where there is war going, to, going on between such a country and Muslims, be it a Muslim state or Muslim community living under non-Muslim occupation. And Dar al-Ahad or Dar al-Aman, this refers to the whole territory where a Muslim have no authority or political power, where, however, there is a peace between non-Muslims and Muslims. And the third one, the third category of the adobe of disabled Dar al-Kufr is adobe of proclamation of Islam or Dar al-Dawah, 
uh, certainly missionary activities from the part of the Muslims have to be based on peaceful and rational methods. Legally speaking, however, there would be no difference between Dar al Amn or Dar al Ahad in this concept and Muslims as residents and citizens of non-Muslim countries. From the perspective of Islamic law, when discussing the issue of Muslims living in a non-Muslim country, we come across the following two terms, ikama and uh, istitan, or tajannus, citizenship in non-Muslim countries. Ikama is the first subject, uh, the first subject is the problem of per permissibility of staying for the purpose of work, study, commerce, etc. in a land ruled by non-Muslims. Based on the Quran and the rulings of Prophet, uh, famous maximum of Islamic laws, uh, maxim of Islamic law says that everything on this earth is lawful, uh, muban in Arabic. That is, in, it's optional unless it is clearly forbidden. Whatever the Sharia has uh, dis disregarded is mubah. And the second cause obstacle would be the imperm impermissible of staying in what is considered dar al mafasid, the adobe of corruption or prevention that is from the practicing of Islam. The under underlying principle of this concept states that whatever leads to unlawful practices is unlawful. And the second one, Tajanus or Istitan, citizenship is in non-Muslim countries. These two terms or similar expressions do not exist in the word works of classical medieval Islamic jurisprudence. Today, perhaps about one third of the world's <coughs> Muslims are living in a minority situation. From this perspective, the very discussion of the uh, acceptability of residing in a non-Muslim country is not nothing less than an uh, anachronism. The main problem about citizenship in Muwala friendship, uh, but used here in the sense of support for a non-Muslim state submitting to its legal system, which is contradictory to Islam. However, there may be some obligatory situations for Muslims in which they would be able to accept the citizenship of non-Muslim states. The scholars in bold base uh, have based their assertions on the legal concept of uh, the darura, literally necessity, need, requisite, essential, etc. Practically speaking, that would, for instance, mean that in the case a non-Muslim country does not issue a staying permit, a Muslim may be obliged to accept the citizenship instead. Another group of scholars, however, does not does allow for citizenship in non-Muslim countries. According to them, Islam permits Muslims to accept protection of their life, property, and freedom, of, uh, freedom by non-Muslim rulers and their political systems. That is to say, the granting of asylum of various country, kinds and ultimately the citizenship. The Islamic conception of citizenship. One of the general attributes of Islam that needs to be taken into account in its, uh, is its claim to universality and the assertion that its standards of equality uh, transcend the particularities of tribe and nation uh, and for that matter of the nation state. Islam rejects all racial, ethnic, and hereditary criteria of distinction which constitute the foundation of uh, foundations of the nationalism. The only valid ground on which any individual may be deemed superior to another in Islam is taqwa. Despite the awareness the Quran has conveyed of the reality of people's attachment to their place of birth and residence, it makes no direct reference to the citizenship. To the migrants and helpers, Muhajirun and Ansar, the migrants were the early believers who were uh, persecuted, fled, with, uh, fled their homes and then formed a community in Medina alongside those who, those who gave them shelter and helped them and serve. Matter of mili uh, military service. The military service for non-Muslims in a Muslim state is another ijtihad-based issue. Non-Muslims had been exempted from joining the military service in the past because they used to pay the jizya in turn, return for military protection by the Muslim army when the wars were waged in the name of religion. Hence, it is fair for the non-Muslim citizens in the Muslim community not to participate in a war against the adherents of their very religion. However, today the situation is completely different. Wars are of a nation, uh, national f nature fought by soldiers, each harboring its personal intent. Some are fighting for the sake of God, some for the sake of their nation, and others merely for the sake of defense of their families only. And some current issues and scholars view the time of war period, jihad and non-Muslim citizens. It is jihad an obligation to render military service, namely against anything that implies evil. There, there are many verses in Quran 
which says the obligation of jihad to hold Muslims living in a country. That's Quran 22, 30, 39 to 40. This defense of political and spiritual freedom must be accorded by the Muslims, not only to their own community, but also to the, that all the non-Muslims living in their midst. The religion's, uh, religion's commandments uh, com cannot be binding upon non-Muslims. Jihad now a day, nowadays uh, only permissible in self-defense. This duty of def defending the sta state obviously a duty for non-Muslim citizen as well. But when it become, became the matter of religion, non-Muslim citizens cannot under all <coughs> circumstances be called upon to do the same. Non-Muslims and the taxation. Another important matter in relation to the citizenship uh, rights of non-Muslims is equality in matters of finance and tax. Uh, Ghanushi believers uh, believes that financial aid and uh, fiscal obligations should be equal for the all religious groups. There should not be any discriminatory tax. He would have the jizya or poll tax, which was once paid by the Muslims, by non-Muslims, extended to Muslims. Conversely, the zakat, which is taken from the Muslims, could also be made obligatory for non-Muslims, thus removing any discrimination between groups as to financial obligations to the state. The women and the citizenship. The Fikr literature does not articulate the position of women regarding citizenship, and the issue is consequently dealt with almost entirely under statutory legislation. Immigration and citizenship laws in most countries are on the whole based in their Western uh, antecedents, which also fall short of treating women equally in respect of citizenship rights. A question thus arises of uh, whether a woman can pass or on her nationality and citizenship or to her husband and child in the same way that the law entitles the husband and father to these uh, privilege, privileges. The basic issue here is one of the equality before the law and the laws that currently prevail in non-Muslims, in most Muslims, as, uh, as well as non-Muslim countries, do not offer equal citizenship rights to women. A woman under the prevailing law is not entitled to pass on citizenship to her child or to her husband. Many commentators, including Selim al-Awa and Muhammad uh, Shahroor, have spoken critically of this and called for the reform of the person, personal status laws of the Arab and Islamic countries, wherein it is urged that a woman should be entitled to confer citizenship on her aligned husband, uh, alien husband, as well as on her offsprings. And let me come to the conclusion. Having discarded the idea of Dar al Harb, which had been a stamp, uh, stumbling block in the way of constructing a sound theoretical approach to citizenship in Islamic law, I believe that Islamic law provides a set of general principles relating to citizenship that encourage flexibility and openness. This is due, to mainly, uh, due mainly to the uh, humanitarian outlook of the Quran and Sunnah, which designates ma mankind as God's with uh, with, with a and uh, custodian of the earth to establish a just order therein. The ideals of human dignity, equality, and justice in the Quran and Sunnah tend to view Homo sapiens as a single entity without recognition. At that level of nationality and race are of div the divisive factors that would um, impede the natural freedom of the individual and his choice of residence. Having said that, however, considerations of a judic uh, judicious policy within the general framework of Siyasa Sharia may still be uh, utilized to uh, de determine a policy framework that is beneficial to all concerned without, however, vi violating the basic ideals of equality and justice as they are expounded in the sources of Islam. As we all know, openness and bo broad-mindedness is the real Islam, not ridicule or narrow-minded, which stubborn its matters on fickle obstructions. Thank you. Asalaamu Alaikum.